Section 2 of An Introduction to Yoga by Annie Besant. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 2. The Unfolding of Consciousness One of those pregnant and significant ideas which theosophy scatters so lavishly around is this that the same scale is repeated over and over again, the same succession of events in larger or smaller cycles. If you understand one cycle, you understand the whole. The same laws by which a solar system is builded go to the building up of the system of man. The laws by which the self unfolds his powers in the universe, from the fire mist up to the logos, are the same laws of consciousness which repeat themselves in the universe of man. If you understand them in the one, you can equally understand them in the other. Grasp them in the small and the large is revealed to you. Grasp them in the large and the small becomes intelligible to you. The great unfolding from the stone to the god goes on through millions of years, through aeons of time. But the long unfolding that takes place in the universe takes place in a shorter time cycle within the limit of humanity and this in a cycle so brief that it seems as nothing beside the longer one. Within a still briefer cycle, a similar unfolding takes place in the individual, rapidly, swiftly, with all the force of its past behind it. These forces that manifest and unveil themselves in evolution are cumulative in their power. Embodied in the stone, in the mineral world, they grow and put out a little more of strength and in the mineral world accomplish their unfolding. Then they become too strong for the mineral and press on into the vegetable world. There they unfold more and more of their divinity until they become too mighty for the vegetable and become animal. Expanding within and gaining experiences from the animal, they again overflow the limits of the animal and appear as the human. In the human being they still grow and accumulate with ever-increasing force and exert greater pressure against the barrier and then out of the human they press into the superhuman. This last process of evolution is called yoga. Coming to the individual, the man of our own globe has behind him his long evolution in other chains than ours, this same evolution through mineral to vegetable, through vegetable to animal, through animal to man, and then from our last dwelling place in the lunar orb onto this terrene globe that we call the earth. Our evolution here has all the force of the last evolution in it. And hence, when we come to this shortest cycle of evolution, which is called yoga, the man has behind him the whole of the forces accumulated in his human evolution and it is the accumulation of these forces which enables him to make the passage so rapidly. We must connect our yoga with the evolution of consciousness everywhere else we shall not understand it at all. For the laws of evolution of consciousness in a universe are exactly the same as the laws of yoga and the principles whereby consciousness unfolds itself in the great evolution of humanity are the same principles that we take in yoga and deliberately apply to the more rapid unfolding of our own consciousness. So that yoga, when it is definitely begun, is not a new thing, as some people imagine. The whole evolution is one in its essence. The succession is the same, the sequences identical. Whether you are thinking of the unfolding of consciousness in the universe, or in the human race, or in the individual, you can study the laws of the whole, and in yoga you learn to apply those same laws to your own consciousness rationally and definitely. All the laws are one, however different in their stage of manifestation. If you look at yoga in this light, then this yoga, which seemed so alien and so far off, will begin to wear a familiar face and come to you in a garb not wholly strange. As you study the unfolding of consciousness and the corresponding evolution of form, it will not seem so strange that from man you should pass on to superman, transcending the barrier of humanity and finding yourself in the region where divinity becomes more manifest. End of section 2